Welcome everyone. This is Karen Visser from the Australian National Data Service here in Canberra. So please say hello in the question pod. So we've got some State Library of New South Wales people and some somebody from Goulburn Library. We've got Tasmania, Fremantle, um, Bundaberg, Townsville, Macquarie, Curtin, Japan. Welcome Macquarie, Griffith, RMIT, Palmerston North coming in too fast for me to see. <laughs> so it's wonderful to see so many people engaged. So the first thing is that I would like to welcome everyone and this is a pretty amazing thing both for the research data community and for ANS. Um, those of you who are not aware, we've got over 950 people who have signed up for the webinar. We've got 37 local community groups who have let us know that they're planning on getting started and we have people around the world are watching with real interest about how 23 research data things will go. So we're ready to begin our exciting journey. I don't know about you but we at ANS and all the people who have been helping to organise this, um, we're pretty excited about 23 things and we'd like to say particular thanks to Michael Witt from Purdue University who kick-started this idea by producing a 23 things uh, America and we've taken his basic idea and made it a little bit different um, added a few things and also I have to say shamelessly plagiarised some of their great, many of, of the great ideas in the original 23 things for America. I'll just give you a couple of ideas first about how it's going to, to run. This is what you're seeing on your screen now is the 23 things homepage and you can see where it is, we're in ANS, Partners and Communities, here 23 things and it's also there's a link from the from the ANS homepage. You can see there are four subgroup pages here. Thing one is just saying welcome and, and to get organised. Thing number one, two and three are already up. So let's have a look at thing number one just so to explain a couple of things. You can see here that there are three streams of activity. Getting started, learn more and challenge me. You can choose whichever stream you like. You can even change change horses and streams midway through the journey. There's three different activities for each one of the things and they will ramp up. So Challenge Me starts pretty simple but there are three, you'll see three highly coloured buttons. Do you have to do all three things, all three streams? No, pick and choose. If you know, if one thing really captures your imagination, you might like to have a go for some things to do all three. You might not. It's entirely up to you. Equally, if you find a thing and you're starting to do the thing and you're not from Australia or you're in a specific discipline, feel free to change the activities to suit yourself. To go in and do something, think, oh well, you've given me three ideas for particular repositories but I'm actually interested in something else. Please, this is about you. It's all about what your learning needs are. So feel free to change things for those in New Zealand and other countries because there are some things such as Thing 9 is licensing data. Um, when we get to Thing 9, that week on Meetup, we'll be having somebody from the New Zealand license licensing will also be following along so to provide any specific advice but clearly we can't do that for, <laughs> for all the countries who are with us so please feel free to adapt and change anything that you that you want. One of the questions that we've had is um, <laughs> I can see thing one, two and three but what about all the others? I want to get going. We'll be revealing the things consecutively so each week a new thing will be revealed and two weeks in advance. So for example, this week is thing one, week one if you like, but you can see thing one, thing two and th thing three. Next week you'll see thing two, thing three and th thing four. There's a few break weeks in which case we will have a break that week. That's around Easter. So what we'll be doing after that 
you'll, you will all have a break and then we'll start again. So you'll always be at least two weeks in advance and you can sort of go forward or catch up. How will you know when a, a new thing is going to be there? You'll know that because we'll either send it out in ANS UP, we'll tweet it, and for those of you who don't know ANS UP, you can see here, if you not, haven't subscribed to ANS UP, you might um, like to do that because it'll just keep you up to date. There'll be a special 23 things box and it will um, we'll tell you which thing you're up to for that particular week. So that's ANS UP, just subscribe there. No spam, promise, promise no spam. Um, it's just a fortnightly e-newsletter. I'm just going to go back to thing one now so that most people can see your screen. Uh, sorry, see my screen, and you'll see thing one, thing two, and thing three. If you're up here in thing one, thing one to 23, that's the general page, so you need to come into here, thing two. I'm going to hand over to Judy Bruckner now from ALIA, and uh, for those of you who are ALIA members or who would like to become ALIA members, have a look in the handout screen, you'll be able to see the two PDFs that Judy's put in there regarding the specialisation. So Judy, welcome. Um, Judy's in Canberra. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the research and academic specialisation which is new today? Okay, thank you Karen. Excellent, thank you. Uh, I, first of all, I'd really like to congratulate Anne's on the development of the 23 Things. I think you've done uh, an amazing job and uh, it's uh, really timely. We've had a lot of feedback from uh, our members that they are really interested in this topic. So. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to all the team at ANS for uh, for making this happen, and um, and um, I'm sure it will be uh, really significant um, in the sector. I'd also like to just explain that um, ALIA is the uh, peak organisation for library and information science in Australia, and my job here is uh, the Director of Learning and I look after um, ongoing learning and also course accreditation and education in Australia. The, the basis of our ongoing learning um, is the ALIA PD scheme that was created in um, the year 2000, so it's been going for a long time. We have um, had a, a promotion of constant improvement um, to the PD scheme and as a result of that, about three years ago, we um, added our first uh, specialisation, uh, which uh, allowed us or allowed our members to identify key competencies um, in the area of health uh, and relate their ongoing learning specifically to that. Uh, the PD scheme works um, by people accumulating points over um, a period of time, over, uh, over 12 months it's a minimum of 30 points and over a period of three years, what we call it the triennium, it's 120 points. And that roughly relates to uh, one hour of work and learning to one point. And there are special categories, if you look on our website, that uh, explain this, um, how it works. The real push behind this is ALIA is supporting people and rewarding those who make the effort to keep their learning up to date. So after you've done your initial qualification, you can join the ALIA PD scheme. The health specialisation was three years ago. Uh, we've added quite a few specialisations to that since. Um, some of you will be members of those or just the general scheme um, as it stood. All of those are valid. The one we are launching today is specially related to this new webinar and the 23 things and that is our research and academic specialisation. So Karen, if you can just click on the research and academic specialisation button, that will take you through to the page uh, in our website about the specialisation and explains that we have chosen four streams for the specialisation and if Karen just um, scroll down, we've um, those 
three, um, four streams allow you to specialise doing um, a general. Say you, you feel that you're best suited to cover both areas of research and academic, you can choose the general stream. Um, if your uh, particular interest is just in research, you can choose just the research one or you can choose just the academic one and then at the bottom there you can see coming up on your screen now is the data one. So you can choose a specialisation stream just on data in that um, research academic area. And what you, well, how it works is that you relate your learning to those competencies. So when you're doing your entry into your PD record, and that can, you can use our My, D, My PD tracking tool, or you can use an ePortfolio, you can use a blog, you can use um, anything that's suitable. We don't want people having to rewrite. But the main thing about our, our learning scheme is reflective learning, and it, that is how you're audited. So you need to write against your competency for everything that you learn, um, a brief summary of different things. And you can see down below on that page the coloured dots, and uh, they're just prompts to help you under, uh, to help your, you go through in your mind what you're actually getting out of your learning. Because when you're doing this 23 things, uh, if you have those questions in your mind, you'll get much more out of them. And um, that's one of the key benefits of being part of the ALIA PD scheme is, is that emphasis on reflection. And it's just simple things like I want to find out more about um, oh, this covers competency numbers three or something. So have a look at those. When you audited, that's what you're audited on. We don't ask for tax receipts or we don't ask for certificates of attendance or so forth. And we are now we're launching this specialisation today and there will be over the next few weeks supporting resources for that and one of the key resources that we develop are skills audit checklists and they are, they're where the meat of the specialisation lies, that's where they, all the detail is in the skills audit checklist. So you'll be able to go through those and tick off whether you know something, uh, whether you need to learn it, whether it's not applicable to you. And that will guide you through through your, um, your chosen specialisation or the general PD scheme. If you have any questions at all, I ha there's Lauren is our is our person uh, who looks after the PD scheme. So she'll be responding uh, both to tweets um, and any questions if you want to email uh, Alia PD directly. And um, by doing the webinar series over the next few months, you'll be earning, um, anybody who wants to join up, will earn 20 points towards their 30 points for the year. So it'll be really worth it to, to keep in there and keep going right through to the end and finish, uh, finish the webinar series. And I wish you all good fortune in your learning. This is really exciting. It's, it's new stuff and uh, we're just very grateful to Anne's for all the effort they've put into this development. Thank you very much, Judy. I'd now like to make um, Susanna the presenter and uh, tell us a little about uh, two things. What we're moving now into, ways to be part of the 23 Research Things community. So Susanna's going to take us through the website very briefly and then what are the catch-up webinar sessions and how they work. Thanks, Susanna. Great. Hi guys, as Karen said, my name is Susanna. I am part of the team here at ANS in Canberra who is doing the technical stuff and running the things from behind. Um, if there's anything on the website which goes wrong, that's probably my fault. <laughs> if it's not up there when it should be, that's my fault. If you want to get on to the community's page and everything and you're not there, that's probably my fault too. But we'll try and get it on there. Now, this here is the 23 Research Data Things main page. It's got the latest news on it and just an ongoing thing about what's happening. Down here are various questions that we've had people ask us and they all link to answers that are here on the FAQ page. Um, and they're all linkable down here. So, you know, what are the webinars? They come down here and so on. Um, now, while we're at it, what are the webinars? The, um, 
webinars is this initial one that we've got that's kicking it all off where we go through what's happening and you're able to see the website and what's going on. The follow-up webinars, which you have to register for separately, though you register once and you get that registration gets you on for all six, I think they are, of the follow-up webinars. So this is a kick-off reg- uh, webinar that we're on here today. And then these national ca- um, these catch-up webinars are here. Now, you don't have to turn up to these webinars. These webinars are basically a what's happening, how we're going, um, a little bit about the things that have happened and a little bit of looking forward about the things that are coming up and your chance to ask questions that you don't quite understand what's going on, make comment and things like that. So you can either come to the webinars or maybe you might want to do all of these things just in your local community groups. There is no requirement to turn up to any of those webinars. There's no requirement, as Karen said at the beginning, to do all of the 23 things. You could do one, you can do all 23, or you can do all, what's that, 69 of them if you want to do all three streams all the way through. And Jerry will talk a little bit later about the meetup, which is how we can sort of um, also have a way of connecting with people uh, with regards to what's going on in 23 things. Now, the rest of the website. I'll go back up to that one. So there's Thing Zero, which was a bit of a getting started before we, um, you know, as people were going, what's happening, where are these things, where are these things, before we kick off today, and Things 1 to 23. Now, there's a little bit of an explanation at the top that about what the various things are. And honestly, guys, I promise you I put more things on this page this morning and they are not there. Um, so thing two and thing three with their three coloured buttons should were There they are. Look, look at that. Refresh the webinar. Um, I put them on this morning. Um, and as we go through, the various different things come in as we go on. And thing four will be released next week and thing five to 23 will be progressively released as we head towards October when we actually finish up. Now, from each of these, you can go directly to that part of the next one. So if you click there on thing one, you go to the getting started part of thing one. So you get that same little explanation box at the top. You get what you need to do and then how to sort of share your thoughts and go further on from there. And then when you finish your thing one, you can get your credit badge, which will be talked about later. You can go on to thing two if it's open or you can go back to that page we were just on with all the things on it. Or if you want to, you can go and do the other t- two parts of thing one, so the, the learn more and the challenge me. Now, Karen did explain a little bit about these. You don't have to do them all. You can do just the getting started ones or you maybe in a couple of weeks you might think, oh, my goodness, these getting started ones, I understand them, I'm getting them um, fairly quickly done through. Well, challenge yourself and go on and do the others. But as we said, there is absolutely no requirement to do any of any of them or all of them. It's really up to you and what you're going to get out of it and what you think you're going to get out of it. So thing two, thing two has been released as well. See, there it is. Oh, the website's working for me. How wonderful. Um, it's exactly the same format. You'll see that same big buttons at the top, which will jump you down to there if that's what you want to. Um, if that's where you want to go and your various things are there. Go on, thing three is there, ready and waiting for you. So as soon as you're ready for them, you can get to go. Now, at thing four, thing four is not there yet because we haven't released it yet. As Karen said, we're releasing them slowly as we go through the year and that will be ready and available March 8th. Um, we will also have let you know by ends up and Twitter and so on when they're available. Now, Jerry, I think I hand over to you so that you can talk about Meetup. Thank you, Susanna. So I'm Jerry Ryder. I work with the Australian National Data Service in Adelaide, Australia. I've spoken and emailed with many of you, of you over the last few weeks as we've got this program up and running. Um, so Susanna has shown you the 23 Things webpage and the individual pages for each thing. And she's also spoken a little bit about the webinars, which are an option for people who want to join a virtual community to discuss 
things, um, to ask questions that they may not have um, seen resolved through Meetup or through their community group get-togethers. And uh, Meetup is another option for people who want to interact with this program virtually. So essentially we'll be using Meetup just as a discussion forum um, for things. The website that Suzanne has just shown you is our main communication channel in terms of the latest news and the reveal of things, um, but uh, Meetup is our space for actually posting questions, sharing thoughts, uh, providing comments, um, starting a discussion about things. We have, as you've seen, uh, three streams of activity for each thing. And what we've um, chosen to do with our um, discussion boards is to actually set up a separate discussion board for each stream of activity for each thing. So if, for instance, you're doing the getting started activity for thing one, there is a dedicated message board just for um, discussion around that particular activity. All the discussion boards will be set up in place, so you won't need to create a discussion board. Just simply use this add a reply function to um, put your comments in or, sh or, or your questions. What we're really hoping is that you, the community, the people participating in the program, will jump in, uh, help answer questions, contribute to discussions, share comments and thoughts, Obviously, we at ANS will be keeping an eye on this space, but we really want this to become a space where the community to, can get together and share ideas in a virtual way. Now, again, like the webinars, it's not compulsory for you to contribute to the Meetup site. If you're contributing to part of a community group, you may prefer to instead share your comments and questions with your community group and perhaps just have one or two members of your group, keep an eye on this space and perhaps contribute to this space on behalf of your group. Now you will need to register to join Meetup. It's a very, very simple process that you can do and then you can come and go from this space and use it, as I said, to post your questions, add comments and just to see what other people are saying. There is a possibility too to, um, I've got it up here, to track a, dis a discussion. So if you really want to keep an eye on what's happening with a particular discussion st stream, you can opt to track a discussion and then be alerted when new things are added to it. So that's essentially how we will use Meetup, is really just for the message board facility. And at the moment, we've got message boards for the activities up to thing four. Uh, no content in any of them yet, um, obviously because we're just kicking off, but again more of these message boards will be added um, as things are revealed. So that's a quick look at Meetup. If you have any questions about it, please um, don't hesitate to ask. We did set up a thing zero message board that you're welcome to use to introduce yourself to others in the community and perhaps sort of indicate a particular interest where you might be able to connect with others that share that particular interest. The other thing that Susanna alluded to were our community groups and what we've um, I guess encouraged here is for people in the community to set up face-to-face -face groups or, or a mixture of face-to-face -face and virtual groups whereby people who either work in the same institution or in the same geographic area can get together to actually um, discuss the 23 things. So hopefully you can see on my screen that we have already about 37 groups uh, from New Zealand and all the states of Australia uh, that um, have um, emerged. And we would certainly encourage others who might be interested in starting up a group to do so. Uh, I think it's a great way to network in person and if you're a work group to actually perhaps talk about how you might implement some of the learnings from doing the 23 things. Uh, a geographic group is obviously a great way to go as well, particularly perhaps if you're working um, on your own in research data management in your organisation, 
and you want to connect with others who are, are also interested in doing this program. And we'll hear shortly from a couple of people who are actually running community groups. But if you do have a community group or would like to start one, please let us know. We're happy to put it up here on our very long list, uh, mainly just so that others can have a look and see, oh, yep, there's a group in my area or there's already a group in my organisation. I know who to con contact to find out more about that group. So please take the time to have a look through that and think about starting up a group if there's not one already in place. And you can certainly use uh, Meetup and um, a Twitter account to promote your group as well. So that's a quick overview of uh, the community groups. Um, so now we've got a couple of people to um, talk about their groups. Okay, so okay. first up. First up today, we've got Leanne Griffiths from the CSIRO, who's just going to quickly tell us a little bit about her group. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, Jerry. Just quickly, CSIRO has a distributed um, workplace, and no two team members actually sit in the same location. To enable us to provide support to each other as we progress through the 23 research data things, we decided that we would begin with a monthly virtual get-together where we could discuss uh, things that had happened in that month and we'll be starting our first one on the 8th of March. So it gives people an opportunity to work through a couple of the things and then we'll have a catch-up. News just breaking to my team is that I've actually had some thoughts over the last couple of days and I'm going to introduce, in addition to the monthly catch-up, a 15-minute scrum-type session so that we can come to a, a quick 15-minute session once a week and bring any um, learnings that we wanted to share or any problems that people are having as they progress. To underpin these sessions, we have our three and newly on board fourth data management librarians um, assisting the outreach librarians team and the information resources team to um, engage in the research data things. So um, the other thing we need to work through is looking at tracking and rewards. That will be um, something we'll be looking at as well. We would also like, if possible, where we have staff on site, if we could join in a local group as well and engage with a local group as well. But certainly for us, the virtual catch-up is what we're planning to work through initially. That's it for me. That's great. Thank you, Leanne. So, Anthea Harris from um, Perth, did you want to just quickly tell us a little bit about the group that you're planning? Uh, I just thought it sounded interesting and I thought, right, I'll get a group together and if I say I'll have a group, then people will come, but nobody's come yet. Um, I've decided that we could actually get a definite venue on Jerry's ad uh, advice and so the Windsor Hotel in South Perth next Tuesday at half past six I'll find a table 23 in the beer garden and uh, if anyone wants to come to that then uh, we'll start off then and see what our group's like. Thanks Anne. Um, yeah, <laughs> No, that's lovely and the beer garden sounds like a wonderful option and Anthea's email is up on the community groups page if you want to touch base with Anthea um, before next week. I'm sure she'd love to hear from you and essentially her group's open to anybody in the Perth area um, that's interested in doing the program. And I might come under the AU West umbrella. Great. Thank you, Anthea. Finally, for this uh, session, um, Anton. Um, we have Anton Angelo from University of Can Canterbury over in New Zealand. Anton, do you want to just tell us a little bit about your group, please? Thank you. Tēnā um, uh, We are um, a surprisingly large group, actually. Um, uh, I've been amazed how many people are interested in this. I think we're doing this at the right time. I'd like to thank our hosts here, Anne's, for arranging something which I think is just amazing and for us to be able to piggyback on. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, what I would like to do is invite other New Zealanders who may be a bit further down the track um, on research data, especially with things like copyright and storage in the New Zealand context, to get in touch with me and then we can um, 
we can mould some of the things later on to have a more of a New Zealand component in them. Uh, my address as well is uh, up there on the uh, Meetups page. And we're just going to work out, I'm going to brush down and talk to our group um, in a minute and we're going to work out a bit democratically how we're going to meet and how we're going to do that. Um, the thought of a beer garden is extraordinarily attractive, but I, <laughs> I somehow I don't think we'll get away with that, um, unfortunately. But there you go. Um, we're probably just going to have to have lunch or something like that um, and even bring our own, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, Thank you again to Anne's for doing that and really looking forward to any other New Zealanders who uh, want to get in touch with me and we can uh, mould some of that later. Those things. Great. Thanks, Anton. And we've been delighted at the response from New Zealand it's, and it's terrific to be able to share this program across, um, across country borders. So next thing we just wanted to quickly cover off on was um, rewards. Now. For those people who are a member of ALIA, we've just heard previously about how you can earn uh, PD points through ALIA. The other mechanism that we're using that we hope may provide some motivation for people to keep going with their 23 things is uh, digital badges. Now we scratched our heads a little bit about what we could do in the context of a program like this. Um, to reward people for actually completing things and hopefully provide a bit of motivation. Um, and we came up with the idea of digital badges and we're using the Credly system. So I've just flicked back now to the Meetup uh, discussion page um, for thing one. And what I, can, what I hope you might be able to see is this link here where it says completion of thing one means you've earned a digital badge, claim it here. And what and that same uh, that same link is available on the thing description pages that Susanna showed us earlier. So that when you've finished your thing, you can click on that link and go off and claim a Credly badge. we we've, we've created badges for each of the 23 things so that you've got a little bit of recognition as you go along uh, for complete thing. Um, there's no proof required. This is an honesty system um, to claim your badges. We're not going to be monitoring who's claiming for what and actually have they done their thing. We can't possibly know who's done what things because this is a self-directed program. But we hope that you'll find that that's a little bit of fun, a little bit of motivation and perhaps a basis on which perhaps your community group may itself have a leaderboard or some other mechanism for motivating people to keep going and uh, to contribute to the program as well. Now the Credly badges are free but you will need to register first which you'll be prompted to, to do when you first go to claim a badge. It's a short free registration process to do that. And then we do encourage you to claim your badge when you complete each thing. There will be the link, as I said, from each discussion page as well as from each thing page on the website so it's easy to find. I'll Mary, could I just um, add in there, there's some, been some really interesting um, chat on in the question pod about how some people are also doing rewards. And um, from M, we've got chat with your managers if it's in your PDR. Decide which stream of things you're going to aim yourself at. So that's another way of ensuring that uh, managers are aware of what you're doing as well. That's something that you might want to consider as well. Yes, yeah, so we, so we as, as I said, we at ANS can only do so much in terms of rewards, but hopefully if you're a part of a community group and particularly one within, a, within an institution, you may come up with your own mechanism for rewards, celebrations, you know, as you complete things or sections of things, just a bit of fun and a bit of recognition for um, working through the program and sticking with it. If someone okay, asked thank whether we, sorry, um, Gary, I'm just jumping in here. Someone's asked if we get a big badge at the end we can put on your staff homepage. That's a really good idea. <laughs> when we get to the end, we may have a surprise for you. Um, I'm not sure there is one now, but we'll, we'll look into that. And um, somebody else has said that they're getting drinks and food when they finish. Um, I hope that's part <laughs> of my management um, <laughs> and things. 
Okay. And hello, it's, it's Judy here, just saying that um, anyone who's going through the 23 things and doing the Alia PD scheme specialisation, um, after um, the 12 months and if they do some extra work and get their extra 10 points, uh, they can be an Alia certified professional um, academic research specialisation. So extra reward and extra encouragement there to keep going. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Just a, a, a question in the question pod, which it might make it easier for people to understand, just to show where the link is to the discussion board. So someone's asked, how do we get to the discussion board? You can go directly to the meetup site, or at the bottom of each thing activity, you'll see um, a section like this where it will take you, there's a link there to meet up that takes you directly to the discussion board for that particular activity. Mm -hmm. So um, you can access it from here or go to the meetup site directly and um, access it from there. Okay, okay. And I, thank you. I noticed that I did click on it and I haven't actually logged into meetup here, so you do need to log in. Um, it is also a closed group too, so you have to be accepted to come into the um, group, so it's not, you know, free to the world for everybody to work out and see what's going on and we should hopefully then not get anybody who's not interested in what we're doing there. Now, I need to let you guys know about the Twitter handle. Here's our Twitter handle, um, 23RD Things, um, and that was an earlier one and I think if I refresh it, yes, there's all sorts of things, thing one thing two, who put that one up? <laughs> Uh, thank you. <laughs> I did have a thought when we were doing the badges whether we could get thing, you know, up to thing 23, but then I thought, no, nah, maybe that's just a bit much. And there's obviously a group there. I can't see the moment where they are, but they're all listening to us, and that's fantastic. And somebody's obviously got all the rewards happening already. Fantastic. None of that round here. Karen, you're slipping. <laughs> the, this is the Twitter handle that we'd like you to post to if you're mentioning about the 23 research data things. Would I also like, if you could, to add the Anne's Data um, Twitter handle. I realise, of course, there's only 140 characters, but that just links it back to anybody else who's following us at Anne's who may not know about the research data things and what we're doing. Now, the other thing that we've come up with but we haven't really started using yet is a for those who are being a, a community organiser. So it's Thing OS, and I can't for the... Thing organisers, I think. Thing organiser. Yeah, thing organiser, that's what the thing OS was. So if you've got um, questions that you want to ask to other community group leaders, just tag it with this and, and that will be another way of keeping yourself from going insane because you they're on your own and you've got, you know, this great big room full of people who are looking to you <laughs> and you may want some help or some ideas or things like that. And, of course, we will be monitoring these various Twitter streams to see what's going on, what questions are being asked, and um, we're trying to help you wherever we can. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming along today, and let's get started. This is a pretty exciting opportunity. We're keen for all of you to let us know how you're going. Look, if you've got any queries or questions or good ideas, tweet them. Or what you can do is you can just uh, drop an email to anyone at ANS on our web page. I think there's a general uh, contact at ANS email address. You can use that. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for your support. The 23 organising team has drawn on expertise literally from around the world. And our local community members have been really forthcoming in supporting us and each other. To get started, we wish all of the groups all the best and if you don't have a group in your local area, don't forget there's the catch-up webinars and there's Twitter and there's the ANS staff who can answer any questions or help you get started or if you're not sure what to do, we can set up one of these um, go-to webinar meetings just one-on-one -on -one if you're not sure how to get started, so just let us know. So I'd like to thank you all for coming along and wish you all the very best and we're looking forward to seeing you all either at webinars in your local groups and Anne's staff, by the way, are also available to come along every so often if you'd like us to join in with your, your groups. Um, we're happy to come along and sit in and provide any support that we can. So on behalf of all of the people here at Anne's and all of the community who have supported 
each other to get these 23 things going. Let, let the fun begin. Let the games begin. Let the things begin. So we'll see you all probably at our next catch-up webinar or in your community groups or we'll see you on Meetup.